Good morning. Population, population, population. 6.9. It's the only thing that anyone outside of this room wants to talk about. But this room is different. Today is different. In the spirit of British Petroleum's campaign to move beyond petroleum, today I hope we can move beyond population. Let me tell you a little story. This is my four-year-old daughter. She thinks Singapore kicks ass. She gets to do Taekwondo here. We could have raised our family anywhere in the world. In fact, we came here from London, which many people think of as the greatest city in the world. But we thought differently. We wanted to be in the heart of Asia, the capital of Asia. We wanted a place with great work-life balance, safety, education. Singapore, in fact, has it all. We came here by choice. I guess we came at a very interesting time, since a lot of people believe that Singapore is becoming normal as it democratizes, as we focus now increasingly on inequality, congestion, all of the problems. Well, I want to remind you that Singapore is, in fact, an extraordinary country and can continue to be even more so. Let's put things in perspective and take a step back. The Arab Spring. It's quite symptomatic of most of the post-colonial world, which is most of all of the countries in the world, which, since many of their, their founding in 1945 and afterwards, have experienced overpopulation, crumbling infrastructure, corrupt governments, and revolution. By contrast, Singapore is the single most successful post-colonial country in the entire world. There is no second place. If you've sat in a Bangalore traffic jam or experienced the air pollution in Hong Kong, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But that is not enough. Singapore is already moving beyond the charms of being a lovely post-colonial country. The image of Singapore isn't the colonial architecture of Raffles Hotel anymore, is it? It's things like Marina Bay Sands, it's the technology. Singapore is already moving well into the 21st century and becoming what I like to call the info state. Just look at how Singapore compares in the rankings to other countries when it comes to eco-friendliness, competitiveness, quality of life. You can see that Singapore is up there with Canada, with Australia, with Finland in terms of its competitiveness, innovativeness, entrepreneurialism, dynamism. And what's important to realize is that bigger isn't necessarily better. This is the little red dot. But that was a derisive term used to criticize Singapore. But now we realize today that size can be a liability. Think about Russia, largest country in the world, can't cope with the needs that it has for infrastructure. In China, there isn't enough. In America, it's crumbling. This is the age of the city. And in that age, a place like Singapore can be ahead of the trends and can be a leader. How is it going to do that? Let's talk about data. The biggest trend happening in Singapore today, in fact, isn't democratization. It's the role of data. It's using technology to anticipate our needs and to build infrastructure to meet those demands in transportation, in connectivity, spreading fiber optic Wi-Fi around the country. All of that is happening because of the role of data in this country. But it's more than just about building infrastructure. It's the where and the how. And here, Singapore is also trying to be different. If you think about this connectivity and the opportunity it creates, it means that we can decongest the country. Why do we have to have traffic jams in CBD every day when people can spread out and live and work in the same places? So now investments are being made in new industrial parks for clean technology, for logistics, for advanced manufacturing. All of these, again, will allow people to live and work in the same place. It will make Singapore what Boris Johnson likes to call a city of villages. That's what makes London uh, so charming. That's what he calls London. But Singapore will be different. It will be a country of 21st century villages. Now, today's presentations are going to talk about how to keep Singapore uh, entrepreneurial and include in those innovative opportunities people who don't have elite backgrounds. 
We're going to talk about maintaining social harmony at a time of growing diversity. We're going to talk about building bridges within the population, keeping Singapore clean and green. All of those are extremely important. And I firmly believe that here at TEDx and that the conversations and deliberations that are happening in the parliament, in the universities, in the media are going to form the consensus, are going to pave the way to making sure that Singapore remains an extraordinary country. Thank you very much.